I was a young fellow, I was 18 years old when I come up here the first time. And right up, I don't know whether y'all seen it or not, my dad, there's a plaque to my dad on a tree over here. He, he wound up wiring this park the first three or four years he came up here. Birch would never lock it up in the winter. And people would come in here and steal all the wiring out, you know, take it in for selling for scrap metal. During the winter, and daddy come up here, they'd come up in the spring, and they wound up rewiring this park till, you know, for the first three or four or five years until it got up big enough and people were paying attention they didn't come in here and just steal stuff by. But I came up here, I was a young fella, and, you know, 18 years old, just out of high school, and I thought I was physically fit and everything. Well, this park was just all to pieces at that point. And I remember we got up here about a Tuesday or something like that. I remember going up and playing a TV show in Indianapolis on Wednesday morning. But anyhow, we come back down here and he worked us like dogs over this place. <laughs> they didn't have no lights up over there at the barn at that point, not to amount to anything. So he said, we're going over in the park and get a light pole. Okay. So we go up in front of where the old stage was and there was a post out there that wasn't completely rotted out, you know, to 15, 20, 25 feet in the air. And we come over here and he gets his pole, he, he got around it and bear hooked it and lifted it out of the ground and just let it fall. And he sticks me on one end of it, on the small end, plumb neck back next to the end of it. And he got about a fourth of the way back in that light pole and he was carrying most of the weight. And he drug me from about where that current stage is over there, where the old barn is, you know, where the museum is. Well, down through this bottom where you first come into this place, it was all grown up down there with a big briar thicket and everything and a barbed wire fence. He drug me through that damn stuff down there, tore my legs all to pieces and everything, and the more I'd say stop, the more he just had it in the middle <laughs> to go on. Well, I get some kind of idea of what that guy's strength is like, you know, with just that pole being out there doing that. Now, kind of, here's a 60-year-old man out here in this thing, and he's taking it to me pretty good. I think he was 56 at that time. That evening, anybody remember where all the old concrete block outhouses were yeah. over beside the barn over there? Yeah. We had baseball gloves and baseballs. And when he would get to where he wanted to play in the afternoon or something or do something like that, he just had to go get a baseball glove and come out there and pitch ball with him. Well, I ain't never been knocked out in my life at this point. I mean, I've been hit pretty good a couple of times. I had my teeth knocked out when I was 16 years old. Been wearing them ever since. I've taken some good licks, but I had never been knocked out. I got over there and I stood in front of that thing. I sort of got down there and he put a catcher's mitt on me and he got out there and started throwing. And about 10 minutes into this thing, when his arm's getting loosened up, he just he's just uncorking them and starting to go harder. Well, he took one, he threw one ball, and I sort of ducked by like that, and when it did, it just took my hand completely off my arm. And I, Mr. Monroe, that's a little bit more than what I can handle. I said, you, you know, that's going to wind up hurting my hand or something like that. Well, hell, you might as well have raved, waved a red flag in front of the pool <laughs> at that point. Because he cut loose with that next ball, and I remember ducking it sideways like that, but the next thing I remember, it ricocheted off that concrete block building, hit me right in the base of the skull there. And the next thing I remember, I was looking up, and I could see this ball glove waving over me. He had a baseball glove. <laughs> oh, you hurt him? Are you going to be all right? You think? And I was going to do but he knocked me out cold with a ricocheted baseball. <laughs> and it was the first time it had ever happened to me in my life that I'd ever, ever been knocked completely out. Are you all right? Are you all right? Oh, we better put that ball up before you get hurt out. <laughs> <laughs>